Shilakua yo mio, Papa Shilakua yo mi, yes, sir. Ipa nu jeo, Jeko jino si le mi. Wamo nu mi dun, Papa o ni le ayo. Oro yo mi, ma jeko pa mi le kun. Shilakua yo mio, Papa Shilakua yo mi, yes. Ipa nu jeo. Jeko jino si le mi, wamo no mi du, papa o ni le ayo. Oro ayo mi, ma jeko o kwa mi le kun. Oro ayo mi se, ma jeko o kwa mi le kun. Shile kun ayo mi o, papa shile kun ayo mi. Yes, iba nu je o, jeko jino si le mi. Wa mo nu mi du, papa o ni le ayo. Oro ayo mi, ma je ko o pa mi le kun. Good morning and welcome back to Authentic Conversations Emoji. I actually got dressed for you today. It's been a while. We've been running back and forth from the village and I have not had time, honestly, to sit here and do this. But you guys know I love talking to you. If you're here, just say hello so I know who you are, so I can say hi and reconnect back with you guys. Um, this is Moji Solo Wilson, and it's Authentic Conversations Emoji. Let's wait a few minutes for others to join in while I share this to my public page. All right. It's, um, I can't see who's watching, so say hello. I see Abs K, I see Damilola Ozego. How are you? Thank you for joining us. And um, today's conversation is very important. So I'm going to ask you to share it because a lot of people are going through it. And in as much as we don't really um, like to talk about difficult conversations yeah, I really believe it's time that we should start talking about things like this because hopefully hear us. And I'm hoping that the younger generations don't make the same mistakes that we did. And I say we, my, you know, old people like me. <laughs> okay, so I'm not really old, I'm just older. So today I wanted to talk about, um, hold on one second. Um, I wanted to talk about when is enough enough in relationships? And when I say relationships, I mean romantic relationships, childships, workships, any kind of ship that's out there really. That's what we're gonna be t talking about. Um, uh, hold on. Oh, all right. I also work in the meantime, so forgive me. But on a serious note, I think it's time we start talking about these things that could change the trajectory of our lives as human beings. Because, you know, I well, the most profound thing that I heard last week, and I'm going to tell you, so just hold on with me, stand there for and let me do my thing. Because, you know, my wife worked, my wife worked really, really hard to be able to put this back end thing together for me. But do me a favor and share this while we go ahead. If you're on my public page and you want to comment, remember that you you um, can't come to the private page. I mean, if you can't come, if you're on my private page, you can come to the public page, yeah? So give me a second. <laughs> So welcome back to Authentic Conversations with Moji. And yes, it's me, Moji Solo Wilson. And I look absolutely different, don't I? I do this thing where I flip my hair from the traditional African look to this Oyinboyish look that I like a lot. Anyways, so um, the past two, three weeks, yeah, there's been so much going on on social media with people that um, are going through it. If you're Nigerian, let me start with the Nigerian aspect of things, right? So. In Nigeria, there was a gentleman, super rich, that left his wife 20, almost 30 years ago, lived in a hotel for 10 years, and then he jammed a, a woman who's a lawyer. Uh, her name is something priest or pressed. Very, she comes from a very good family, very, very, very wealthy family. So she had her own money. It wasn't about the money that the man had, and they fell in love. And they've been together almost 20 years, over 20 years. They have a child together. 
the ex-wife who stayed married to this man for over 25 years and has not been in contact really with the man, right? All that while the gentleman was ill, he's a doctor, he owns one of the biggest hospitals in Nigeria, all the while, while he was ill, not, not one of his children showed up. Not one, allegedly, I should always say, not one of his children showed up. His ex-wife did not show up. And I say ex-wife, even, even though they're legally married. And then he died and they all showed up at the mortuary to claim his body because, you know, money, right? In the meantime, this other woman that he had been with many years, who was on a second marriage, probably didn't want to get married. I don't know. We're not tight like that. But I made a few phone calls to family friends of mine that know the family, and I kind of got a little bit of gist. The only three people that know what really happened is the first wife, as they say in Nigeria, the second wife, because in Nigeria, men have more than one wife. I've often told you guys how my father had 12 wives, right? But my question today is, when is enough really enough? Because for me, I was married previously. I was very unhappy. I was miserable in the relationship because I, Moji, was not... I had low self-esteem, so I continued, I chose the wrong partner to marry. See, accountability, accountability is a word that's missing in the black people and Nigerian dictionary. Don't ask me why. If you want to come on and tell us your opinion, please let me know and I'll bring you right in. It's not a big deal. I will send you the link to the show. But this is my opinion. And I'm sitting here thinking, if I, Moji, could walk away from, I signed away seven houses to my ex-husband, he owed me $95,000 by the time I met my wife. And just to be free of him, you know, I didn't go after him for the money. I signed over seven houses in exchange for the full custody of the children, which still didn't work because my oldest son decided my rules in the house, go to school, do this and do that was too, you know, too much for him. And he decided to go live with his dad. So bottom line is that at some point, we women have to start to take accountability for the things that we do. Why would you want to stay married to a man that no longer wants you or anybody for that matter? You guys know I'm a inclusion and diversity is my thing, right? So why would you want to stay married to anybody or be in a friendship with anybody that you know does not truly care about you or want the best for you? If a man walks out on you and you stay married for 20 something years, you just put a full stop on your romantic life, on your life, and on the possibilities of you finding another man or woman that would respect you, love you, care for you, care for your children, and be there for you. There's too many women and men, I must say, that stay in jacked up, loveless, um, loveless, romanticless, sexless relationship because they're afraid of the word divorce. See, we all know that for you to become who God created you to be, it's your choices that gets you where you end up. You cannot continue to believe that if you stay in a bad relationship, it's going to get better. And I talk about romantic relationships first. There's a friend of mine on social media, on Facebook. She's not really my friend. She's a Facebook friend, yeah? And it puzzled me. I mean, brilliant, amazing women are getting jacked by men that are less than them and sometimes high, I don't know, that, that make less than them and they put in their all, they put in their money. And I'm not saying that I'm a saint because I'm not, I'll tell you. It took me a long time to get here, but I had to make those conscious choices to become who I am today. When you continue to make excuses for BS, when you don't let go of stuff that's not working, the possibilities of anything working is zero, absolutely zero. If I had stayed in that jacked up relationship, because in the days when I got divorced, when I got separated about 14, 15 years ago now, people were not really, black women, Nigerian women were not really getting divorces. We were shunned, we was, you know, literally friends. I remember a friend of mine, or oh, an ex-friend now, I call her an acquaintance now, when I decided to walk out of my relationship because I, it just wasn't working at all. I mean, I, I knew something, would, it wasn't working from be, before we got married. 
But I got married because of the pressure of the world saying you're 36 years old. When are you going to get married? I already had kids because I wanted kids and I had them. I had them with a friend of mine that was generous enough to be the father. He made me sign a piece of paper saying, OK, you're not going to come after me for child support. And I signed the paper. Never asked him for Jack. Put all my kids through school, did everything I wanted to do uh, just by myself. Now, here's the thing. If I had stayed in that jacked up relationship, I would not be with the love of my life at the moment that treats me like a queen and I treat like a queen as well, because I would still be saddled down to this madness. Problem is that a lot of us get used to chaos. We get used to things that don't make sense or we don't believe. And I continue to say anybody that stays with somebody that doesn't treat them well, is a volunteer because you know I can make all the excuses in the world. I mean, I was homeless at one point because I chose to leave that relationship. But everything comes with a price, folks. Everything, every bloody thing comes with a price. And until we start to understand that it's the choices, it's our choices that makes us who we are and makes us comfortable or not comfortable. Problem is a lot of with people willing to pay the price to be happy. Why would you stay married to a man that left you living in a hotel? The man lived in a hotel for 10 years. And then this man finally met somebody that he loved. People are selfish though. You know that man doesn't love you. You know the man doesn't want you enough, but no, by hook or hell, and let him go. But forget about him letting you go, you, you letting him go. How about you free yourself from the bondage? How about you free yourself from the BS life? that you're living at the moment. You know, I, 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 people say I'm a snob. I'm not a snob. I've just lived a whole lot of, I, I lived to my father. I saw how my father t treated his wives. And the ones that are living a joyful life today are the women that had the courage to walk because what they thought they were getting from my dad was not what he had to offer or he could even give them. So when we talk about relationships and I ask the question, when is enough really enough? We have to ask ourselves, is, am I talking about just romantic relationships? Hell no. I'm talking about friendship. I saw a post on my, uh, my sister. I call her my sister. You know, she's really not my sister, but family is not always blood. So I saw a post this morning that says, you know, the people that have hurt me the most are the people that said, I love you. And that's true because the people that are on the outside are not going to hurt you because they don't have access to your heart. So what I ask you to do is to look at your lives each day. Ask yourself, am I okay where I am? Am I happy doing what I'm doing? It's your job. Because a lot of people just go to work every day like a machine. You get up and you go and you're not living a purposeful life. And you don't feel fulfilled in your life. But you don't quit the job because you're afraid. How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to pay the rent? When we all know, without a shadow of a doubt, we all know, without a shadow of a doubt, that people that are doing things that they love are, are the happiest people in the world. And the money always, well, the money usually comes when you're doing the things that you love. So people stay in a job because, oh, my God, I have to pay the rent. What will people think of me? I have a friend that, that's, a, a, that's an, a lawyer, one of the best corporate lawyers in New York, and she quit her job. She hated that life. Guess what she's doing? She opened up a restaurant. She opened up a restaurant. And she's struggling, but she's happy. I mean, you don't stay with people or places. You don't stay in a place because the money is good. At the end of the day, the money is not going to keep you warm. The money is not going to say, hey, are you okay? The money is not going to be what? Yes, money is good. I'm not lying to you. I've had money. I've lost money. I've, I, I used to be very comfortable. At one point, I had a Range Rover in the driveway. I had an ML4 driveway. I had five cars in the driveway. But I was miserable. I tried to commit suicide because it wasn't working. I gave all my life up that I worked for, by the way. I walked away from that life. I became homeless. Because the economy was bad. No. Yeah, that was part of it. But my ex-husband sold the house from underneath me. I had no clue. But even then, I stood my ground. 
when things got too hard, I sold my ML430. You guys know because if you've been following me for a while or you're my Facebook friend, you know because I posted the pictures. I have no shame. See, when you take your power back from people, you know, when you take your power back, there's no shame. I posted my bicycle. I named it BMW 865, and I wrote to sell million-dollar houses. And I know everybody's not that strong. That's why it's important to have people that support you, and they have the courage to tell you the truth. I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I don't. Because, look, one of the things that I believe in is authenticity. One of the things that I preach, actually, is authenticity. And authenticity is what is a superpower. It's what makes you special. It's what makes you different. And other people can learn from your walk if you're not too ashamed, right? Of course, I don't tell you guys everything, right? I don't, because I don't think you deserve to know everything. But I do share quite a lot in my life and people have laughed at me in the past because I talk and now everybody has diarrhea of the mouth. Like some guy told me one time as I write a book, but now everybody's sharing. See, the more you share your story with other people, not only do you get information, not only do you get help, right? Not only do you, do you get um, people to be your mentor, even sometimes it's afar, you also get support. Not money, but emotional support. I have people, I have a friend, one of my two friends, <laughs> that I call when I'm having children issues because I just trust a judgment have children issues right let's say let's talk about when is enough in it, enough when you're talking about kids okay we talked about relationship right let's move it to the childship when you talk about childship i have that i worked all my life i say all my life i've de dedicated over 30 years of my life to children i'm not one of those people that accidentally got pregnant i made a conscious decision that i wanted children at 26. so i had my kids now, the second time around, it wasn't my choice because I was, I knew I, I didn't want to be mad or chasing young kids around the place, but I still had two kids because I was in a relationship and my partner at that point wanted children. And one of the things that I said was, I don't want to be a single parent all my life. So just make sure that whatever happens, if the relationship doesn't work, be there. Of course, he wasn't there. He owes, he never paid child support, owes me $95,000 in child support. And I've done everything I could for the kids. When my son, oldest son, chose to go live with his dad, I was broken. I was very hurt. But even then, I kept going back and he would slap me a little. Abuse. You know, it wasn't just wasn't nice. He's just not nice to me at all for whatever reasons. Problem is, see, when, when these kids make, the, make their choices, we as adults, as parents, we forget that they have a right to make their choice. We forget that they are human beings and we're just their guide. The universe uses us mothers and parents as a vessel to bring them to the world. And our job is only to guide them. We can't make them be something. We can't make them do something. We cannot force them into going to school, into doing this, into doing their homework and all this and all that. And at some point, I had to decide for myself, am I going to continue to expose myself to some a child of mine being rude, being, you know, condescending, not cooperating. And I'm trying to make his life better. So if he chooses not to adhere by the guidelines that I'm giving him, she cannot. And that's exactly what I did. And everybody was like, oh, my God, you're so mean. You're so this, you're so that. But, honey, look, it's better that tough love sometimes is the best kind of love we can give certain children. Because I have four kids and all four of my children are so different from each other. It's freaking unbelievable. Four children and they're so different. They have some of my traits, they have some of their father's traits. And you have to understand you can't change DNA because there's some traits that are prevalent in certain families and there's nothing you can do about it. So you do your best, but you stop it yourself. I have a friend, not even a friend, it's a Facebook friend, whose son was dealing drugs from a house and in the state that they lived in, when is enough going to be enough, right? He had been to jail two or three times. She kept bringing him back inside her house. This last time, the state that she lived in, I'm not going to say the person's name or state, they take your house over when drugs are being dealt from there. Yes, they do. So now this poor woman has lost her home because her drug dealing son chooses not to stop 
But she herself, she did not choose herself over this person that she spat out. Because if you know your child is dealing drugs in your house and the possibilities of your house being confiscated by the government is very large. Why would you let him stay there? And people say, oh my God, but that's a child. That's a child, honey. I ain't dying for nobody because your child's life is going to go on. You lost your home, right? Now, this woman has lost her home that she worked for all her life because she was protecting her son. Her son that had no respect for her. Her son that had no respect for her home. Her son that had no respect for his, his siblings. Her son that had no respect for himself. Because when you have respect for yourself, you don't deal drugs. Forget the other people's lives that you're ruining and destroying. When you have respect for yourself and you understand the law of karma, you don't deal drugs. When is enough enough, folks? When is enough going to be enough? A lot of us have friends. Friends, honey. When we talk about friends, let me tell you something. I, Muji, I have learned my lesson. When we talk about friends, I have learned my lesson. What do I mean by I have learned my lesson? I have learned my lesson 10 times over with friends. Friends will sell you out. Friends want what you want, so they will destroy your name. I had a friend that always said, oh, I love you on all my posts. You'll come there and say, I love you. One day I had made the mistake. <laughs> she was peeing on a live chat. And I made the mistake because she had asked me if I'm, you know, when I'm on um, opioids, I get crazy. And I do crazy things. If you see me, pull the rein. Oh, no. I made the mistake. She was peeing on social media on a live chat. So I inboxed her and said, hey, sis, this is not acceptable. Or this is not good. Or your children will see this and it's not good for you. Kiniko, kiniko. Right? Hey! Let me tell you what she did. She dragged me for a whole week. She went on social media and talked about me and all kinds of lies and said I had a crush on her for 10 years. I don't, I'm like, I don't even, I haven't even known you for 10 years. Oh, all kinds of stuff. These are people that say, I love you. When is enough going to be enough? When are we going to start to, see, until we start to value ourselves, until we start to love ourselves, we'll continue to be the doormat for other people. You already, there's a lot of people that use you and you know it. There's friends, you see, there's friends that use you because you're popular, because you have money, because you're this, or because of what you do for them. And they'll continue to hang around you. And they'll continue to sing your song of praises until that day. So now I have learned. I've been saying it for over, I think, about four years now. Quality over quantity. I unfriended about 4,000 Facebook friends. Yes, I did. I was at... 499 something about two years ago. And I started to clean my page. There's no point holding on to God. People, he just weighs you down. I started to clean my page because enough was enough. Enough was enough of exposing myself to people that I don't know, number one. A lot of us like likes. I was drunk on likes for a long time. And then I started to respect myself. When you're drunk on, on external gratification, that's when you do things like you don't pay your own bills, you're paying somebody else's bills, you don't have money, people call you and you'll send it to them. Guilty, been there, done that. So nowadays, because I value me, I spend more time on the things that I know brings me joy. I spend time with people that bring me what? Joy. I, major I just like laughters. I like to laugh. I don't hang around people that bring me down or talk about me. And there's a lot of people that will do that to you. They'll come to your page and like your post and they're talking ish about you. It always comes back because the law of the universe is always working. And when you have a clean heart anyways, when you know you want to go places, if you're an alcoholic trying to become sober, you don't go and hang out with, you know, alcoholics. And you definitely do not go and hang out in drug shops. I mean, in alcohol shops, right? In liquor stores. What you do is you surround yourself with people that are going on the same wavelength as you. When is enough going to be enough? When are we going to start to value ourselves? When are we going to start to respect ourselves? Because when you respect yourself, honey, 
everybody else respects you. It's the way you carry the things that you do for you, with you, that teaches other people how to treat you. When you make yourself everybody else's doormat, they'll wipe their feet on you. That's what there's, I mean, isn't that what a doormat is there for? Seriously, think about it. A lot of us have to go inwards and start to ask ourselves, what value do these people bring into my life? If you're with a person, a, a partner that's degrading you, that's verbally abusive, that's not attentive, that's not, ro not forget romantic, that's not affectionate, and that's what you want from life, you have to free yourself. That woman that I started off with earlier that was married to a doctor in Nigeria who left her 20 something years ago and she's still married to him, Honey, I would have been the one. I was the one that went to court and said, I want a divorce. Everything comes with a price. So what? You're no longer Mrs. whatever. What if there's Mr. somebody out there that God had created and said, okay, you guys are going to go learn, learn your life lessons. And by the time you meet each other, you will have acquired the life skills to build a life of substance together. Think about it. But you're holding on to these nasty, skanky people that are not worthy of you. And I'm not, you know, there's been a lot of talk about people of value. The way people define value makes no sense to me because, you know, Kevin Samuels talks about value, a man of value. But a man of value makes $100,000. If money is what value is to you, it should go to you. You're a money sexual. You're not a heterosexual. And I'm not knocking your games brother or sister, whatever you are. There's so many, 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 many people, six billion people in the world or more. Why are you holding to one rotten egg that makes you feel like crap? Why are you hanging children? Just because you gave birth to a child does not make that your all in all. There's so many kids out there that are looking for people to love them and parents to guide them. And we focus all our energy on children that don't want us. Think about it. I have mentees that I treat like my children. I have mentees that treat me like I'm their mother. I get love because I'm open to it. Are you open to receive love from where you get it? Or are you hell bent on getting it from people that treat you like crap? When is enough enough in relationships? That's the question of the day. And I know it's not a popular conversation. I know it's not. But these are difficult, authentic, authentic, difficult conversations that we have to start to ask ourselves. We can no longer continue to push and sweep things under the rug because the next generations are looking up to us elders. And that's how they learn how to be. I know I didn't become who I am just by walk in my walk. I looked at the lives of other people around me. I read a lot of books. I was in therapy. I'm not going to lie. I've been in therapy on and off for about 15, 20 years. And I have no shame. See, a lot of black people think therapy is something bad. It's not. It helps you to become your authentic self. It helps you to become a better version of you. Ask anybody that's successful out there. They have mentors. They have either have a mentor a mentor or they have therapists or they have a psychologist that's giving them medication thank god mine didn't get to that position because you know i do yoga i do meditations i believe in manifestations what you want from life you have to work for i'm up at 3 a.m meditating because i know my scoin scoin boku right part of becoming authentic is learning who you are and understanding who you are. I don't see any comments, so I feel like I'm talking to myself here. So please say hi or something, so I know that I'm not talking to myself. But on a serious note, one of the reasons, you know, when is enough enough? For a long time, I was I was um, hell-bent on Nigeria. Hi, I was obsessed with making Nigeria a better place. And then it dawned on me about six years ago that Nigerians are the problem, not the country itself, right? So what did I do, honestly? What did I do? I stopped. I stopped helping people that don't want to help themselves. Because what that is, is that we're enabling people. 
A young lady inboxed my wife. <laughs> you would think they've known each other for 20 years, right? Asking for money to fix her laptop. And I really didn't see anything wrong with it. It was just the tone, right? The tone like that, you know, uh, you kind of have to do this for me because, and I'm like, wait. So I inboxed her, I said, by the way, I, my wife brought it to me and said, what do you think of this? I said, first of all, I don't understand why she would ask you for money in this manner because she sounds like you owe it to her. She sounds like she's known you for 50 years and it's an obligation as opposed to a favor. And there's nothing wrong with helping people. We'll do it all the time. But the, when you don't expect anything from anybody, yeah, it makes life so much easier. You get more. When you don't expect anything from anybody and you are just appreciative, thank you, uh, Olubuki, for talking to me. <laughs> you know, when you don't expect and you're humble and you don't expect anything from anybody, now people want to do for you. People want you to be successful. We all want to help. We all want to mentor. We all want to help people, but we cannot continue because, you know, my relationship with Nigeria is kind of like Jack. It's, it's really broken because when I hung out with people I thought were educated, I turned out they're not really educated. Uh, they're basically, some of them were educated illiterate. The late, I invited Nigerians to our wedding. They sold my picture. One of them, one person sold the picture and I can't, I'm not knocking the whole of Nigeria because in that same Nigerian community was my uncle Dayo. I call him my uncle. He's older than me, but I call him my uncle because he stood up for, for me and he played the role of my father at my, my wedding to my wife. And, you know, one person saw the picture. We had security, armed security guards there. And this girl still, I don't know if she sold it, but I heard she sold it, but she claimed she didn't sell it. It was an accident, it accidentally got in the hands of a blogger. Okay. Mm. But when there's lack of integrity among the people, we have to start to honestly use our power of discernment. And that's where I am today. And I'm a believer in mentorship. I'm a believer in helping people grow. But one thing we don't do, I no longer do, and I'm not going to say we, because my wife has always been there. I just got to the point where personally, I think empowering people, helping them to become the best version of themselves so they can feed themselves. One of the things that I'm very, very passionate about is empowering women, Nigerian women especially, so they can stop, a lot of them can stop sleeping with men or being in relationships for money. I'm not saying anything wrong with it if you're a money sexual because you're living your authentic life. But if you're not a money sexual and if you're wondering what a money sexual is, a money sexual is somebody that's attracted to money. I'm a lesbian. I'm a homosexual. I'm attracted to the same gender. You have people that are attracted to anybody as long as they have money, right? Right, that's what a money sexual is. I believe strongly in empowerment. You know, you what you put into your life is what you're going to get out of it. If somebody continues to money and carry you and do everything for you, God forbid that person dies. What are you going to do? When is enough going to be enough? When I asked myself that question, that's when I stepped back. And I started to focus on me and my wife and my family. And it, whoever I choose to help, it's no longer because I thought I was obligated to save the whole world or and you know people like me that think that it's their job to save the whole world it's really because they have low self-esteem and the more you love yourself the more you start to build boundaries around you the more you stop taking crap from and i when i say people that includes your children you know that includes your children i mean i spoke to about four or five mothers yesterday uh, no not yesterday last week they called me with their issues. I'm a certified life coach. So I have clients that call me with their issues and I always ask their permission. I don't mention their names, but I always ask their permission to talk about their stories on my show. And one of the things that bothered me is that the common thing of these people is that when these mothers should have left their children alone to learn their life lessons, they kept bailing them out. For instance, like one of the daughters liked to buy fancy clothing. So when the month, <laughs> the rent is due, she'll call her mom and her mom will give her money. 
And the first time the lady told me about that about seven months ago, I said, you, can't, you have to stop. Because until you let her suffer the consequences of her choices, she won't learn. Life lessons don't come cheap, folks. As mothers, when we talk about as parents, we have to understand that we have to give our children the tool, the life tools, so that when they become 40, 50, that's not when they're learning about real life. So she didn't listen. And her daughter, she gave the child, her daughter, more money. And then last week she called me up and said, oh, Muji, by the way, I decided to take your um, advice and not give her the money because, look, if she doesn't have money, why is she traveling all over? She just came back from, from Europe and she couldn't pay her rent. I said, she could to you. She said it was the hardest thing she's ever had to do. She sobbed and she cried. While she's talking to me, she's crying. And I said, why are you crying? What is your greatest fear? Oh, she's going to lose her apartment. She lives in a whole different state. If she loses her apartment, she might have to go to the shelter. I said, well, you should have laid it out. You should always try to tell your children the truth. See, <clears throat> when you tell the truth, nobody's going to like you. I can testify to that. It took me a long time to get to the point where I started to speak in truth to people. And the moment I started to speak in truth to people, they stopped. A lot of people stopped liking me. A lot of people stopped following me. A lot of people don't, you know, they'll follow me and they'll watch the show, but they won't come on. So I don't see them there because the truth hurts. But without living in truth, integrity will become, will lack. Without living in truth, your moral compass will be bent and eventually will be broken, which is why Nigeria is where it is today. Bottom line is, she didn't give her daughter the money. Her daughter got upset and abused her and cried and da 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 da. She didn't. Guess what? The daughter called her back and said, Thank you, mommy, for not giving me the money. See, that's one child, Tori Ekwe, whose head is correct because she learned the lesson now. Imagine this same person, this young girl. Growing up thinking her mother is always going to be there and God forbid something happens to the mother. How is she going to continue to leave? Because that's the way. I, when I started making my uh, our son, because Margaret and I have a son in the house, when we started making him pay, I mean not pay, cook his own meals. We buy the food and we get him to cook. In the beginning, he was very upset. He told somebody that, you know, I was being mean because I'd always cooked. He doesn't eat vegetables. He doesn't eat this and his food can't touch. And then, honey. Now that he cooks his own food, not only has he become a good chef, now he eats whatever. Because when somebody else is putting in the sweat, you don't understand the value that they bring to the table. When is enough going to be enough? Mothers are sitting there. A lot of black men are running around and mock. They, I just think they all think, a lot of them, they're not they all, oh, because before people start inboxing me, a lot of them think that women are there for their taking and how dare you, I'm a Jekyll man, and you have a PhD. Why don't you think I'm good enough for you? Honey, you're not. And if a woman decides I want something good for myself, now they call her a gold digger, now they call her, honey, I know who I am, I know where I've been, I know how much work I put into my life. Community service days is over. I'm sorry, I'm 54. Maybe when you're 22, 20, you can be playing all that nonsense. I'm 56, Seth. Sometimes I forget how old I am because I'm looking all fabulous. Sorry. Anyways, truth is, I am 56, going to be 57. When I met my wife, by the time I met my wife, Margaret, I had decided I'm not settling. I am not, I'm going to stay single where I am. I'm not getting married to anybody. I'm not going to be in a serious relationship with anybody unless they are up to par. I'm not going to date anybody that I have to pay their bills again ever in my life because I've done that too many times. And the more you value yourself, the more you want good things for yourself. Nobody, I am not ever. I've been called all kinds of names in the LGBTQ community because I wouldn't date this or I wouldn't date that person. I'm not dating anybody that's married. I'm out shouting, I'm out. How is that going to work? I'm not going to date anybody that's married in the closet because that means you're dragging me back into the closet. And mm, I was in the closet for 40 years of my life. Almost killed myself three times. Committed, tried to commit suicide three times. I'm not going back in the closet with anybody. Nobody's worth that to me.
None. I value me. When you start to value yourself, you start to build boundaries. You start to be choosy about the people you let into your space. And then you learn to file people in file cabinets, right? People don't like it when I say this, but it's the truth. I have learned to put people in file cabinets. This one, Busa. That one, Busa. This one, Busa. I have a mentor for spirituality. I have a Christian mentor. When I get confused with the Bible, I call. I have a monk that I call when I'm confused with life because, you know, Buddhism is about philosophy and understanding and asking questions. Christianity, they just tell you, this is what the Bible says, Booth. And then when, you did, when I went to school to become a minister, honey, the stuff they're teaching you guys in church is a lie. It's a way of keeping you in bondage. Spirituality in truth is about living a conscious, conscious, I repeat, conscious, intentional life where you treat people the way they sh you, everybody should be treated. Yes, I did. File cabinets. Everybody belongs. Look, everybody belongs in a file cabinet. And that's the truth. Because, you know, when you're filing your, your when you get paperwork in your mail, you open up a file cabinet, the bills going one. So I have people that are blood suckers, money suckers, that all they, came, they hang out with me for is money. I put them in that file. Then you have people that really, truly care about you. People that you meet that just want to make your life easier. I put them in family file cabinet. I don't call them friends. And then you have acquaintances and then you have friends. The biggest mistakes that I have made with my life and I continue to share my story, not because I think people, you know, but because I want people, honestly, to learn from my work. If I cannot use my light to light the path of somebody else out of darkness, it's not a purposeful life. Because at the end of the day, when you think about it, when you, oh, Olubuki, you have to go for spirit, spirituality. Is Religiosity is like a, a drug. It's like an opium. You get high, you go low. You get high, you go low. Then you have to drink some more. That's why people go to church every Sunday. Because they go to Sunday like they fill their car. And then they drive around all week and whoosh, it's gone. But when you are a spiritual person, your cup is always full. We went through one of the most difficult times in the past. Well, one of the many difficult times that my wife and I have been through. But this was caused by nature, not human beings, when we had the thing in Texas. And through it all, we were laughing. You know, my wife was cracking jokes. She's making silly videos. I'm laughing. She's laughing. Because we have faith. And faith is not about, you know, when, you have, when you're a spiritual person, you, what you realize is that, yeah, when you're a spiritual person, you focus on the goodness in things. You find joy in the most horrible situations. And then you're able to help people because you want to, not because you're obligated to. See, Christians will tell you when you give, you get. Buddhists will tell you you give because that's what you're supposed to do. Not because you're going to get anything back, but because that's how the universe goes around in a circle. That's the difference. And I'm not asking anybody to be, you know, you don't have to be a Buddhist to be a spiritualist. You could be a Christian, but be more spiritual than religious. Because I don't call myself a Christian. I call myself an omnist. Let's talk about when is enough going to be enough. Let's talk about church. When is enough going to be enough? Half of these pastors are proud the place they're all liars they're motivational speakers they want money they tell you things that they didn't see they'll tell you your mother is the one killing you so oh, stay away from your mother you all damn well know it's not true but it feels good it's like a drug you get high on these things so every sunday you go to church so the pastor can preach to you the things that you should go and investigate yourself when is enough going to be enough i have been around some amazing pastors i must tell you but when you're around a pastor that's called to serve, you know. Because they will not allow you to lie. They will tell you the truth. They're not going to tell you, oh, it's your grandfather that's doing you or your stepmother that's doing you when you yourself are not going to school. You understand? If you are in a bad relationship, they won't tell you God does not like divorces when your husband is cheating on you and beating the crap out of you. They will tell you to leave. 
Those are the real men of God. Jesus, it's in the Bible. That's it's somewhere in the Bible. I don't remember exactly where it says, if you God sent people out, right? He said, if you get to their door and they are not welcoming, he said, shake the dust off your feet and leave. But yet pastors and the moms and all these people are tell, continuously telling women and men in bad relationships to stay. When in the Bible, he says that when you get to the door of people and they do not receive you well, shake the dust off your feet. If anybody knows that verse, please post it. Shake the dust off your feet and leave. But they'll tell you God doesn't like divorces, really? God doesn't like divorce, but he walked into the synagogue or the building that's a place of his father's, and people were selling wussy wussy in there, and the guy got upset and threw them all out. Honey, if Jesus Christ himself can do that, who are we? Who are we? How arrogant are we? That we think we're supposed to die in a problem or you're hoping that something's going to be better it might be better but in the meantime save yourself in the meantime if you're in a bad relationship and you've tried to go for therapy and you've tried to work with this person and it's not working set yourself and them free let them go let them go muji said so let them go because if you don't let them go let i will tell you right now you are going to be a living dead person i know too many living dead people they're alive but they're dead you look in their eyes there's no fire there's no light there's nothing because they're not living their own life they're living the life to please everybody else social media has destroyed a lot of things very very little authenticity on social media you'll see people in actual be same material at parties or read their body language you know there's no chemistry between the two of them there's nothing going on you know and a lot of you women forgive me gay straight or crooked we're all women let's talk let's talk why do you think you don't deserve a good partner why do you think your partner that's cheating on you is going to change when you have not drawn the line, when you have not given that partner consequences? Ask yourself that. Ask, please ask yourself that. When you have not given your partner consequences when they cheat, the guy cheats, you shout, you yell, and everything goes back to normal and he starts cheating again. I have a Facebook friend whose husband's been cheating on her for many, many years. If left her. Because nobody respects a woman that allows them to go in and go out and cheat on them and do this. Nobody's going to respect you. You know, people say I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm very mean. I'm not mean. I, it took me a long time to like myself, honey. And I know what I bring to the table, so I'm not afraid to eat by myself. How many of you can say that? And like I said, it's not about money because I've shopped in ramen, I've eaten ramen noodles. I would go into 99, my best, my very shop, I can't say the name because they're not paying me for advertising. 99 cent store, I'll buy chicken, I do this and make ramen, ramen noodles like you've never seen it before. I don't care. Because when you love yourself and you have self-esteem, I'm not saying you should be arrogant or proud I'm saying define your boundaries. The first time a person cheats on you, the second time they cheat on you, mm, the third time you're now a volunteer. And a lot of women will say, oh, but I can't leave my relationship because I have children, because I have this. Yes, I get it. But what are you doing to prepare yourself to leave? What are you doing to prepare yourself to exit? Are you at a job where you only have a, a master's and a bachelor's and they want you to have a master's? Are you going to school? I mean, people always talk about, oh, my God, I can't do this. I have a job. My daughter is 27, 26. She just graduated with her master's while holding down a full-time job in New York. All her life, I've always told her, I owe you nothing for your education. Education is a passport to your freedom. Me, God, that I'm sitting here, I, don't, I only have a first degree. I don't have a master's. But I know that... I, as I'm a real estate broker, and I've been a real estate broker for many years. When the market got bad and I was looking for a job, even though I've owned real estate offices with 22, 30 agents, I could not get a job without a master's degree. I didn't have the skills for today. 
or back then. And I'm still doing real estate. But when push comes to shove, the more certificates, the more skills, the more this, that you, the more wisdom and knowledge that you have. So empower yourself. Get an education. If you like to cook, become a chef. If you like to do this, do what feeds your soul and the money will come. But stop selling yourself short and staying in relationships that are already dead, that you know is not going anywhere. And I'm not knocking people that choose to stay because there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm staying in my, bad, in my relationship. It's horrible because my, my, my children on oh, no. Your children will rather be with one sane parent. They would rather be in a home where there's love and, you know, laughter and joy, where they're struggling. But it motivates them as well to do better because they don't want to be end up in your shoes. So they would rather you leave that relationship so they can see your authentic aura. But too many times we stay in relationships because, oh, you know, you don't want your children to grow up without a father. But the father that beats up his mother, mm, what you're teaching your children to do when they grow up is to beat up on their partners as well. What you're teaching your children as a mother, your daughters, is to be okay with people or partners. And I don't say men because I'm a lesbian and now we're allowed to get married, right? So I, you, you have to teach your children to value themselves. Because when you value yourself, you don't allow people to treat you like garbage. I'm not saying people won't try. They will. I'm not even saying they won't. They will. But build your boundaries. Build your boundaries. You know, I have loads and loads of friends, men and women, that have been in relationships that are really, really bad. And when they leave, you know, because I, one of the most profound, hold on, let me read it word for word. Ah, one of the most profound things I heard in the past few days was an, an elderly woman speaking to my wife. And she said, we live many lives in a lifetime. I repeat, Miss Eileen said that and tears just started rolling down my face. Because sometimes, you know, we forget who we are. We forget where we've been coming from. You know, that statement, we live many lives in a lifetime. Thank you, Unbreakable. I appreciate you. Matthew 10 V 14 is the verse I was talking about earlier, right? We live many lives in a lifetime. Every phase of our life, it's like you're reading a chapter, right? If you're reading a book, you have to close one chapter to go to the next, right? If you don't close that cha whole chapter, you can move forward to the next. So until we all start, honestly, to close the doors that's no longer working, to close the doors that is sucking the life out of us, we can't get to our promised land. We can't. Olubuki says, reasons why I left my marriage, my child needs a sane mother to excel too, morally, mentally, and shuku to you, darling. Shuku to you. Because people don't understand. Your children need a mentally sane person. I remember when I was in my past relationship, I was cranky, I was edgy, I was all of the above, name it. And my ex had cheated on me because I had low self-esteem. I married him. I mean, <laughs> seriously. And for him, I'm number one in real estate in Staten Island. He's feeling like, what the, you know, so he had to go and find somebody that was less. And you can't fault him. That's what works for him. That's, I mean, sometimes people can't handle all your fabulousness. And that's worked. That's what works for him. And as for me, I am grateful for the children I have. I'm grateful for the life lessons that I took along the way because I wouldn't be able to sit here if I had not gone through what I went through. Like I said, I was sitting in the house thinking everything was cool. We had I signed over seven houses and I kept the eighth house because that's the one that I felt I really liked and it was mine. I bought it with only my money and I thought it was fair. And it's all the house from underneath me. Accountability. I sat here for many, many years saying, oh, this is what happened, oh, but this is my part in it. Everything that happens to us, we have a part that we played. Until we become accountable for our choices, 
until we all become accountable for the things, for our roles in our lives. Nothing's going to change. If you continue to point the fingers at everybody else and you're not speaking in truth to yourself, you will never grow. Hey, Tolula, quite good to see you. You look great. You will never grow. You know, Nola Solomon says you, ne you don't stay for the kids. If it's not working, you leave for the kids. Shuku to you. If you want to come in, let me know. Hit me on the inbox and I'll send you a, a link to come in. Because you have to leave for the kids. L-E-A-V-E -E and L-I-V-E. -E. You are only teaching the children the wrong things when you stay in bad relationships. When is enough enough? When and how? When is enough enough? Childship, workships, <laughs> lifeship. There's many of you out there li not living the life that you deserve because you're not willing to give up what's not working. Many of you in relationships, that's not working. But you'll stay because you're not willing to give it up. A lot is going on around the world, folks. The universe has taught us 2020 and 2021. 2020, I thought was bad. My mother-in-law died. My pastor, favorite pastor in the world died. Many, many, many hundreds of thousands of people died around the world. And we're still here. We have a second chance to do better. 2021 started with a bang. All kinds of madness is going on in the universe. How much time do you really believe that you have to waste in bad relationships, to waste in a job that's not going anywhere while the fire is burning inside you to do something different? The longer you stay in these bad relationships, the longer you stay in the bad love ship, child ship, work ship, the less time you have to enjoy your life. I got married for the first, well, for the, I, for the first time at 36. I stayed in horrible relationships. I made excuses for my lack of courage to leave. I stayed because, oh my God, I don't want my kids to be divorced. Oh my God, people are going to think I'm crazy. Oh my God, oh, I don't want people to know that I'm gay. Haunt me. Most of my friends said they knew. They kind of knew that I wasn't exactly straight. We all have a part that we play in things that happen to us. When you become accountable for your choices and your life, you will see how much better your life becomes. And let me tell you something, it gets really, really bad, really bad from my experience. Anyways, I don't know about anybody else's, but from my experience, it gets really, really bad before it gets better. So Tolu Loka Pes says, the fear of what society, peer group and family would say, wouldn't just let some let go of that unhealthy relationship. Help, hence, the depression grows from bad to worse. I lived that life. I lived that life. I knew I wasn't straight. I didn't know what I was, but I knew I wasn't romantically, sexually attracted to men. So I married my who I thought was my best friend at that point. What can I tell you? And I was miserable. And my businesses, I became what I call a functional depression, depressive. I went to work, I did everything, but I was going, I was working so I wouldn't go home. I ran three businesses so I wouldn't go home. So yeah, Tolu Lokpa, you're right. I lived, a lot of people are going through that because we're afraid of what peer group would say, family would say, and we're afraid, period, of what the future would bring. Look at me. My life is a testimony of the grace of God. A lot of people's lives are the testimony of the grace of God and the courage that they embody. We all have courage. Thing is, sometimes we need support. So if you are in a bad relationship and you need to get out or you want to get out, reach out to some friends that you know will be there. Reach out to find a mentor, find a life coach. 
find something. Me, I prefer to pay people so they don't take my story out if I don't want it to be out. If I want to talk about my life, I talk about it here. But I prefer talking to a shrink, a therapist that's got the tools to be able to guide me through the humps. I prefer talking. That's why I became a life coach, so I could have the tools aside of my life experience that I'm bringing to the table, but to have the tools to be able to guide people and not push them over the edge. Find people that would uplift you, not people that will suck you dry <laughs> of your self-esteem, of your self-worth. The moment I wake up every day, the moment I wake up, I go to the mirror, I have to remind myself of who I am. I am beautiful. I am loved by God. I am loved by the universe. Money comes easily to me. Honey, there are days, months have, that I can't sell a house. <laughs> but you put out what you want and what you are. Not I'm, I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a bee. No, there's no I'm a. I left the I'm a club a long time ago. And since then, my life has been absolutely super fantastic. And I'm looking at you today and asking you, for your sake, for the sake of the generations behind us, I'm asking you to value yourself, to look at your life and say, hey, what can I do better? Where can I do better? My daughter said something very, very, very profound to me. She graduated, her graduation was on Saturday on the big screen and I couldn't attend because we had the storm in Texas and water was everywhere here. And she said to me, she goes, I couldn't have become the woman that I am today if you did not become the woman that you are today. Tears just started rolling down my face. At 26, she's not a baby mama. At 26, I wanted children because I felt empty. I was not living my authentic life. She's in a good relationship with her boyfriend. She's doing so much more than I would ever do because I, Muji, had the courage to change my life because nobody changes your life for you. The power is in your hands. The universe is willing and ready and able to collide, I mean, just collide with you. I mean, conspire with you, you know, to help you become the best version of yourself. And when you love you, when you start to love you, you're no longer eating all kinds of stuff and gaining, becoming overweight. You're taking care of yourself. You're doing exercise, whatever way you exercise, because I don't do all the crazy stuff I used to do 10 years ago when I started this show. I used to be on the treadmill and I haven't been to the gym in a long time, but I'm still exercising. I do the dance exercise. My arm is kind of broken. My shoulder is broken. I can't, this is it, 50%. That's all I can use my left shoulder for. So there's a lot I'm not able to do, but there's a lot I can do, so I do it. How valuable is your life to you? How do you think you deserve to be happy? let alone joyful? If the answer to that is yes, when we end the show, I ask you to please get a piece of paper. Write down the things that you're not happy with in your life and then start to write down what you need to do to get there. And this is not an overnight flipping on a switch. Trust me, it's a journey. And if this is something that you you want in your life, you will work for it. You will make it happen. Like I said, when my daughter said to me, I will not be the woman that I am today if you did not become the woman that you are today. Tears rolled down my eyes. When is enough enough, folks? In your love ships, in your, um, in your um, love ships, in your work ships, in your friendships and in your childships? That's a question you have to ask yourself. My name is Moji Solo Wilson. If you got any value out of this piece today, do Moji a favor and share the video. I don't get a lot of followers because I'm not going to do gossip. I'm not going to talk trash and I'm definitely not going to be naked on social media because I value me. I love me and I know my worth. I'm not Jollof Rice. This is authentic, difficult conversations with Moji. Thank all of you that came to join us. Share the video, 
like and follow the page and look for me on IG. I'm supposed to say that. But if you're on um, Clubhouse as well, find me there. I do a lot of talking there because I don't have to get dressed up. But it's been fun. I miss getting dressed up to come sit here and chat with you guys with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And um, I am grateful that you chose to spend time with me. Time is the most precious gift you can give to anybody. You can't pay for it. You can't buy it. You can't extend it. So whatever, wherever you spend your time, make sure it has value to you. May our tomorrow be better than our today. But may our today absolutely be super fantastic. Namaste. See you soon.